Welcome to the first day of our Icon Health Forum. Um, our theme for this week is going to be Take Charge of Your Health, Dementia 360. Please click on preview if you want to join the forum. So we would like to acknowledge our in Icon office is situated on the traditional and central and ceded territory of the Musqueam, Swamish, and Skelegrit peoples. I would also like to acknowledge that you are joining us today from many places near and far and acknowledge the traditional owners and caretakers of those lands. And there are a few announcements. First of Thank you very much. Thank you. I think that uh, on screen you can, uh, some of the participants have uh, done this before, have joined our activities before, and today I'm just going to make a simple introduction of what ICON is all about. Um, hopefully that uh, some of the participants will, new, uh, new will know. So the uh, ICON, um, ICON is one of the projects initiated by the Digital Emergency Medicine of the Faculty of Medicine at the University of British Columbia. The main purpose is to help people in multicultural communities, including Chinese communities, understand how to prevent and self-manage chronic diseases by organizing health seminars, workshops, and using internet technology. We strive to share the most accurate and reliable health information with you. Not only do we hope that local people will actively participate in seminars and other activities. We also hope that the sharing of this health information can be extended to more remote areas and overseas through live webcasts and have everyone work together to improve their health. All right, first of all, I want to introduce uh, from uh, the, the, the lead of uh, digital medicine, emergency medicine, and the founder of ICON, Dr. Kendall Hall, to give you a warm welcome, Kendall. All right, Barbara, thank you. Well, everyone, our friends online uh, and the um, Cafe Nursing Home and uh, the Mineral Community Center, we thank you for your active participation. I am Kendall Hall. I am at UBC. I am one of the uh, professors at the School of Medicine at UBC, and I'm also the executive director of ICON uh, on behalf of the university and on behalf of the Ministry of Health. I thank you for your participation. And I know that it's been for two years that we've had this pandemic. So it's affecting us to, in the, to the point where we have to do this online. I hope that uh, in, in the near future, we can sit together and then we have can actively participate and know each other and know more information. And I know that today uh, we thank you for your active and your enthusiastic support online. And then we can meet on the air. I know that there are some good friends, old friends. And there are also some newcomers. And I thank you for your participation. I hope that today um, this subject on the talk of uh, dementia, we can um, get some insights into this issue. We also thank uh, many media partners. They help to promote this forum. And there are also um, exhibitors, health exhibitors, like Barbara said just now, those uh, you can uh, visit within the next month. So every time after we have spoken, uh, we will um, introduce one or two exhibitors to you. And we also are very thankful for the community partners. Uh, today, I'm not able to thank them all. Uh, so I'm not going to thank them one by one. I'm very happy that at this point in time, I know that uh, there are many, many uh, speakers who will uh, share with us their information and I'm not going to delay that process. Um, but uh, before they do that, I am very honored to be able to invite the 
a representative, representative from the Ministry of Health in BC, as Lindsay R. Scott. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Lindsay Scott, uh, Lindsay R. Scott, who is the Director of Primary Care Quality and Primary Care Division of BC Ministry of Health. It's our huge pleasure uh, to have her here join us today and uh, very kind to have her uh, present to us a uh, opening remarks. So Lindsay, I'd love to pass this over to you and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kendall. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to provide opening remarks at today's Chinese Health Forum, Take Charge of Your Health, Dementia 360. I'm Lindsay R. Scott, as Kendall said, the Director of Primary Care Quality within the Primary Care Division of the Ministry of Health. I would like to acknowledge and offer respect and my gratitude to the Lekwungen peoples on whose traditional territory I'm located on in Saanich and to the Songhees, Esquimalt and uh, Wasainich peoples whose historical relationships with the land continue to this day. I would also like to acknowledge the Métis Charter community located in Victoria. Patients as Partners is based on the motto of nothing about me without me. We believe that engaging patients and their families, healthcare providers, and community partners in healthcare is not only the right thing to do, but is an effective way to make the health system better and the people of BC healthier. Patients as Partners has collaborated and funded ICON for over 10 years with Dr. Kendall Ho as the executive director for all of that time. When ICON started, they brought hundreds of people together to learn about managing chronic diseases. And over the years, ICON has continued to bring health care providers to speak to people in their first languages about topics people want to learn more about. This forum, this health forum brings together a number of presenters whose aims are to increase understanding of what dementia is and how to recognize it. Importantly, they will provide resources and strategies that you and your family can use to empower and optimize your quality of life. For me, today's topic is particularly important as my grandfather suffered from dementia. Having access to today's information and resources could have increased not only his quality of life, but my family's. I want to thank ICON for bringing us together today for this discussion, and I invite you to check out their resources after the discussion. Also, take a look at our patientsaspartners.ca website for other resources and more free educational events for patients and families. Again, I want to express a big thank you to our presenters today, and I appreciate your time and look forward to learning more. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Lindsay. That's it. Uh, thank you again, Lindsay, for the uh, this uh, opening remark and your support. And now I will give the pass mic back to Barbara and our forum starts now. Thank you, Doctor. Today, uh, our theme is about uh, managing health, uh, dementia 360. So you can tell that uh, we hope that we can offer a series of uh, topics uh, on this theme to give you uh, an insight, more insight into this. Um, issue. And there are so many things that we are going to cover today and tomorrow. For today, we want to recognize what uh, dementia is uh, and what the symptoms are and how the importance of early detection and when you will need to seek help and how to treat them, and how to treat it, um, what are the medications to treat it, and, uh, and how to um, deal, uh, how to interact with uh, patients with dementia. And for tomorrow, there is another part of this. Uh, we're gonna talk about nutrition for de um, dementia patients and their mental health, as well as their home safety, as well as uh, their long-term care. So when the uh, patient will need to go into um, long-term care and, and also uh, other care aspects, which we will leave for tomorrow. Dr. Ho again. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Uh, so immediately I will introduce uh, Charmaine Marr. Uh, she is a very good uh, general practitioner and who is very good at diagnosing. I think she would get to explain a few things. Uh, so how we know the difference between normal aging and dementia. So sometimes I might have forgotten my glasses and then I may forget things. So would that be dementia? And also how to recognize early symptoms of dementia. 
uh, so that we can uh, know the importance of early diagnosis and also what factors uh, would increase the risk of uh, dementia. Uh, so the, what are ways for us to increase our health? So uh, thank you, Doc, um, Dr. Ma. So we are going to listen to your presentation right away. Uh, so I'm Dr. Ma, thank you so much. Thank you for your introduction. So I'm very honored uh, today to come today to share medical knowledge. I'm uh, Shemaine Ma, I'm a registered uh, family practitioner. And um, I hope that you will not for forget the main topic. Today's topic is dementia. So actually what is dementia is actually a general term, uh, but uh, explaining that there is some uh, uh, changes in the nerves in our Brain, and then it would uh, go through aging faster than normal people, affecting our life and our function. So without further delay, I would like to talk about what are normal aging and then what is dementia. As a family doctor, many people would come to me and say, oh, sometimes I forget my keys. Sometimes I forget to bring my phone. Would that be dementia? But that is normal aging. So today, uh, when we are getting older, so of course, uh, then with certain age, then just like engines, uh, we are going to wear and tear. And normal aging, well, uh, occasion forgetfulness is kind of normal. For example, talking about past events for over a year or uh, things for a significant time, then I think that is forgetting that is normal. And sometimes I might uh, get lost occasionally. So sometimes we may not be going out for a meal for a long time. And then when I'm driving, we may have forgotten uh, which turn we should make. So that is normal aging. However, uh, if we find that our memory is getting worse, and even some very recent events we may forget, like uh, just yesterday, whether I had a meal or whether I had my shower, or just last week, uh, I saw a friend, but I have forgotten that. And also getting lost at places that you are familiar with, for example, a supermarket that you know of, and then it seems that you, you, don't, you, you get lost. And then for some of my patients who've been here in Canada for many years, and sometimes we, you may forget which door is to the exit. So that may be symptoms of dementia. And also there are some unhappiness in life, which is a very frequent, and that would affect our moods and so that our moods will fluctuate. But from day to day, our moods should be stable. However, uh, because of dementia, we may not have a good um, grasp of the time or the memory of events. Therefore, sometimes we may have uh, unstable emotions and some people would feel uh, scared. Some people feel angry and some people may have a uh, depression. And for uh, most people, as we grow older and uh, we seem to be still very smart, and uh, our conversation usually would be very clear. However, if you find that the conversation or even the speech is slurred, it seems that the uh, ability of understanding and comprehension is affected. And these are some of the uh, symptoms of dementia. And after all, on the whole, uh, there are many things that can affect our everyday life. Uh, for example, uh, shopping, financial uh, management. And then as we get older, and mm -hmm. most of these things we should be able to deal with. However, dementia uh, would be affecting our everyday lives. So the next one we are looking at, we try to look at early symptoms. For early symptoms, uh, so people may say, if it is really early, how can I differentiate whether it's dementia or some other symptoms? So first of all, when we talk about worsening of memory, uh, so personally, 
uh, the person may not feel it. So usually it would be people around us, friends or family. So for example, if you find that uh, your family member seems to be forgetful and also lo uh, losing the way in very familiar environments, then you should pay attention to it. And I would like to remind uh, family and friends and uh, try to uh, raise the concern in loving care and concern. And uh, if you hear people reminding you, then don't just try to hide away from the doctor. You try to approach it as soon as possible. And also the worsening of planning capabilities, for example, shopping, uh, everyday lives, managing your daily life. If that uh, seems to be problematic, that could be early symptoms. And also for everyday uh, self-managing care, like uh, eating or bathing, so then you should approach the family doctor. And talking about speech, uh, if you find that um, the comprehension power or expression power is getting worse, then you should be paying attention. And we also uh, talk about emotions. Some people would, would uh, feel that very obviously, and uh, because uh, you have a uh, poorer memory, then that will affect your emotion, being fearful, angry, sadness, or even depressed. And also we mentioned um, in familiar places, you may get lost. And uh, well, if you're among familiar people uh, walking uh, with uh, family and fans, then you may not notice it. However, when you are on your own, then you get lost easily. That could also be early symptoms. Okay, and let's talk about uh, the importance of early testing. Uh, as a family doctor, so my duty is to um, that is to exclude other reasons. The reason why we have primary care, uh, sometimes uh, we would try to um, assess for the patients because you, when you have discomfort and you come to the family doctor, uh, we would ask you a bunch of questions and give you physical examinations. And then we can uh, sometimes confirm that memory loss could be of uh, other physical uh, problems, for example, lack of vitamins, uh, some people would be lacking thyroid, and or some uh, sleep problems would also affect our memory. So whether you are depression or whether you are under the influence of alcohol or medicine, so that could also be affecting your memory. So it is good to bring it up with your family doctor as soon as possible. Another thing elderly persons should pay attention to would be your hearing or visual problems. If you do not hear well, then you, you might be misunderstood to have comprehensive uh, uh, issues. And if your vision is not good, then you may not see street signs and you get lost more easily, but not because of memory. And if uh, we can, uh, have diagnosis of other health issues, then we can have uh, active participation in your personal decisions, for example, including your health care and maintaining your health. There will be uh, other specialists and pharmacists who can suggest other uh, methods for treatments. And also, uh, treatment takes time, so do not wait until the very last um, uh, part of the illness and then to take care of it. So uh, if you take care of it sooner, there will be more choices. And the importance of early testing, then you can uh, set your goals more easily, like uh, when should I be retiring or should I be taking more trips and also setting important decisions like legal or finance or healthcare decisions. So of course, these should be uh, done as soon as uh, possible. And therefore you can seek for support for other professionals like doctors uh, so that these could be done after early diagnosis and then you can have more choices. And also you can also encourage other people too. You can promote research and things like those. The next one, we are talking about risk factors. 
Now, if you have uh, taken part in previous ICON uh, seminars, uh, there are different age factors. There are some factors that are not changeable and there are some changeable factors. And in this case, unchangeable factors will be our age. Well, we discover that people over 65, so maybe after five years or so, then uh, the risk factor of um, having dementia will be higher. So for sure, age is a risk factor, but we cannot change it. The next one is about the genes. Um, although many people come in and say, oh, are my immediate uh, family or are my extended families uh, have dementia? So that doesn't mean necessarily I will have it. So no, not necessarily. So just don't be afraid and just uh, say to yourself that, oh, I'm uh, doomed to uh, have dementia. No, that is not the attitude. You should talk about this with your doctor uh, so to find out whether that genetic comes in, uh, comes in play in your situation. So next, we can look at some changeable factors. Uh, there are some things that we can take charge of. As a family doctor, oh yes, I am nagging, I'm repeating. So I keep telling people that you should have a balanced diet and do healthy exercises. So when we talk about exercise, people will say, how much should I do that is enough in BC? A health guide, there would be recommendations. So if you don't have restrictions, then uh, there should be 150 minutes of exercise in a week. It sounds a lot, right? But uh, what is the concept? If you split it up every day doing a little bit, then uh, if you do five days a week, then every day you only have to approach 30 minutes. You don't even have to do 30 minutes in one lot. Say in the morning when you find that weather is good, then you can go out and have a 10 minutes walk. And in the afternoon when you feel like it, then you can also go have a walk, do some dancing, do some swimming. And then these all come into play into the 150 minutes in the week. And tomorrow we are going to have a dietitian to share about tips on balanced diet. We discovered that some vitamin like a B, uh, vitamin D or B plus or folate. So if we are lacking any of those, uh, that would also affect um, our brain health. And of course, there will be the three high or this um, smoking or alcohol because of the uh, high blood pressure, high blood glucose or blood cholesterol, they will all be affected. Just like the uh, water pipes in our home, if they have been used for a long time, then there will be uh, some blockages. And uh, therefore, if those blood vessels go into our brain and they are blocked, then of course that will affect our uh, brain. And we also find that there is a traumatic brain injury. For example, uh, boxers or athletes who were more prone to have head injuries, then when they age, the risk factor of having dementia would be significantly higher. So therefore some sports association, uh, they were most, uh, they are more stringent these days. Uh, because uh, even when young uh, children have um, traumatic injury to the head, then there may be a further risk factor and therefore they are trying to keep safety uh, to a higher standard. The next one is about sleeping issues. If there is lack of sleep, then it will promote the deterioration of dementia. And nowadays doctors are not uh, so, uh, prescribing sleeping pills a lot because some people may feel drowsy and that may affect your mood as well. And the next one, we are, we are going to look at when to seek for help. When are we going to see the doctor? When are we going to see other professionals? So if you find yourself or those that you care that are their habits, their speech or their emotions seems to have a lot of change, then accompany them to the family doctor or even other specialists like nurses, pharmacists to see whether they have professional suggestions uh, so that you can uh, have something to deal with it. And then when you discovered that um, the daily lives 
uh, are being affected, that certainly would be a time to seek for help. And also, if you find that there are problems with care, uh, and I think it is a good time to seek for help as well as to express your concern. And today, I know a lot of families are joining us. And um, if you care for your own health and you care for the health of those um, who are around you, and if you want to learn more and or you would uh, want to search for more support, then you should take the first step and then uh, to seek more uh, information. Here, I would like to um, introduce some references. I know most people before coming to the doctor, uh, they would say, oh, doctor, you don't have to say as much. I have uh, to, uh, I have already come across a doctor who is more approachable, who is Dr. Googles. <laughs> so uh, some people, uh, I tell them, don't go onto the website in the middle of the night and then look for those websites. Because uh, usually when they come to the doctor, they will be very scared because they have read all those possible symptoms. So uh, I have listed some possible steps and uh, I know that there is a recording as well as video recording. And uh, I hope that you can find time to find what resources that you can find in the province of BC. And thank you so much to come to this uh, forum to take care of your health. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Ma. Uh, there is a lot of... Now, I want to thank uh, all the speakers of today. And uh, there are also many community uh, partners uh, who have supported our activities. And I want to thank uh, the Ministry of Health uh, of BCA Patients as Partners Initiative, uh, this project to support our work. And our community as partners, uh, uh, there's so many partners, Mosaic, Canadian Mental Health Association, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's Society of British Columbia, Diversity Self Management, South Vancouver Neighborhood House, Family Caregivers of British Columbia, and RCM, RG. So, and also media partners who sponsor and support our activities so that uh, we can have such a huge audience to join us in today's forum. forum. Thank you very much. And finally, we thank our exhibitors, our health exhibitors. Right. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the health exhibitors. Uh, what I want to tell everyone is that there is going to be a month long exhibition uh, there. For example, our Alzheimer Society of British Columbia and the Canadian Mental Health Association, as well as Success and South Vancouver Neighborhood House and Richmond Care, Richmond Gifts, Family Caregivers of British Columbia and Diversity and our own ICON network will also uh, display information there for one whole month. We also want to thank Richmond Cares, Richmond Gifts, who uh, in our community center has, uh, has a viewing party. Uh, and also want to thank a cafe uh, uh, for, for hosting a viewing party. Uh, for now, that's all for today. And I will thank you in English. So remember tomorrow, 2 p.m., we are going to continue our talks on different topics. And tomorrow we're gonna talk about uh, nutritional knowledge on dementia, our nutritionist Jojo, and the mental health of, as, of uh, patients as well as their caregivers, Dr. Tigerson Young, I'm sure you know him well, and also a safety and long-term care. And we have Wendy, Wendy to host this talk. Uh, you're all familiar with her. She's a registered um, occupational therapist. So I hope that Everyone will join us again at 2 p.m.
tomorrow on air and we will share a lot of more information with you so hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow that's it for now see you tomorrow <laughs>